Well, hey friends, welcome back to the Honeystead. My name is Kaylee. If you guys are new here, I just want to introduce myself because I've got a lot of a little bit of everything going on here on our homestead. And of course I am blessed to be able to take you guys with me and kind of share, uh, share a little bit of my life and inspire and encourage and hope that it plants little seeds and, and helps other people grow. But in short, I am a mama, I'm a wife, I am a modern day homesteader. I love beekeeping. I'm an herbalist. I like to go forage. I grow stuff. I eat wild stuff. <laughs> we just do a little bit of everything here on our homestead. And I realized that I have not done a garden tour. So we're going to head over to the garden. I had to come up and grab my, grab my bee veil because the gnats are already out flying. So let's go, let's go check on my garden, the perfectly imperfect weeds and all, <laughs> but this is my life and I get to share it with you guys. <laughs> Gypsy, what you guys doing? And of course, my little garden helpers always come for quick little snacks whenever I am coming up here and working. <laughs> but this, this is my potato patch. So we're doing the Ruth Stout method again. Oh. Um, it worked pretty well with us. I've got to add some more straw, um, but all of these potatoes, these are all growing right on straw. And then when we go to do a harvest, we're just going to pull them straight up. I've got a few different variety that we have growing and I can't exactly remember which ones they are. These little bugs are definitely going to give me a problem. So what I'm going to do to help fight them, I'll probably come through here, pick them off, or I'm going to get my chickens in here and hopefully they can do some work for me. That is my goal. Um, and if not my chickens, I've got another thing that we're going to add to our garden area as, as a, as a trial. This past Mother's Day, my husband and my daughter brought home some baby ducklings that we are, I'm, we're gonna do an experiment. I think it's gonna work out everything that I read. It seems to be pretty promising, um, but we are gonna be adding our ducks in a coop area around that corner um, so that they can be garden ducks. And my goal is to get them in this garden so that they can help with these bugs because I haven't been able to find many bugs that can help eat these little potato funky beetle things. The next thing that I have growing right here, it looks like grass, but I promise you it is not. It is one of my favorite herbs that we use medicinally. Um, this is Avena sativa, which is oats. So we use the oats uh, as oat straw. So once it starts growing, we can harvest it. We use the straw in our teas. It's very mineralizing for your body. But my favorite thing to do with the oats is to harvest the, the tops when they're beautiful and green and you're gonna harvest it and it's gonna produce this very like milky substance. And so what we will do is we will tincture that and use that medicinally as, um, as a tincture, which is called milky stage oats. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each plant that we have growing medicinally, um, but I do want you to do your own research as not every single plant that I talk about is 
is perfect for the right individual. If you have gluten issues, this might not be for you. Um, but for me, I absolutely, I absolutely love using, using milky stage oats in a tincture form. So I was a little late to the game for growing it, but I like to not necessarily follow the rules and we're just gonna grow the things and hope that we can get a harvest. I think we will. It's growing very, very fast and it took, um, it took quite quickly. So as soon as this grows up and we have the beautiful tops, we're gonna harvest and then I get to show you what we're doing with it next. Um, but you can also dry them and use them for your oats, like actual oatmeal. That is something that I'd like to learn. But medicinally speaking, this is one of my favorites that I use pretty much all the time. So I'm not just growing herbs and vegetables in our garden this year. We're going to try our luck with some market flowers. We've got a, a few different varieties that we are learning how to grow. This is something that is new for me. Um, I've always grown a little bit of flowers, but never in this much of an abundance. Um, so bear with us. I will show you that. We figured it would be good. It'd be beneficial for our pollinators as well as um, just adding something a little bit more beautiful to the garden. So one of the ones that we are growing for our market flowers as well as for our food um, is dill. So I have, I've got a bunch of dill that we're going to use. I love the dill bouquets, but my goal is to also harvest a good bit and then take it and bring it over to the freeze dryer and freeze dry the dill so that we can save it and enjoy it during the months that I am not growing it. Um, but that is why we've got a good bit of dill growing as well as a few other flowers. Now, I'm gonna show you, we do have one weed that is kind of predominantly taking over uh, certain areas of the garden, but this is called uh, lamb's quarter. It's actually one of my favorite weeds that you can eat. Uh, harvest it, wash it. I'm just gonna wipe off the little white film kind of that's on it. You can kind of see it on the underside, but you can take it and eat it. It is extremely nutritious and I love the taste of it. It kind of has the texture like spinach, you know, that very um, meaty, leafy kind of texture, um, not as crisp. You can cook with it and you can eat it. And if my goat babies come over, they know, um, because of course I get to share some of that with them. Um, but lamb's quarter is one that we have popping up all over. Uh, and you know, most people would probably pull it, get rid of it. We use it, we eat it. And then of course I feed it back to, feed it back to my animals. Uh, but it is one of my favorite garden weeds that we have, we have growing. So if you are not familiar with, um, with lamb's quarter, definitely, definitely look it up you can kind of see i think let me do that definitely look it up it might be one that you might be you might be interested in come here go go i also have a good bit of cat mint that is growing now we use this medicinally in teas you can tincture it but teas i think it tastes great in um and yes it is catnip for your for your cats but it offers medicinal properties. It's very relaxing. It's good for your nervous system. Calming, super, super calming. And then it also produces an abundance of flowers for our pollinator friends. So all of this is growing and we've got a few rows of it. So when it comes time to harvest, we will come through and I'll show you how to harvest and then what to do with it next. Now I do have a good bit of medicinal herbs growing in our garden, but I also go out and I forage for a lot of them. We are very blessed in our area to have an abundance that is just growing out wild in the woods. And that is my favorite type of gardening. As much as I love this, foraging is so much, so much more fun. Uh, but to help you guys to, to see what I'm using, what we have growing, what we forage for, as well as what we already have up in the apothecary, I do have a full list of, of herbs with the scientific name so that you guys can look them up that way because you're, you're going to find that there are multiple different species. Uh, like when we go walk over and I show you the passion flower, there are, I think, four or five 
four or five different species of passion flower, um, but the one that I use medicinally is Passiflora incarnata, and I will make sure to put that down below. Um, but one of the reasons why we are growing so many medicinal herbs here in our garden is because uh, we're planning on harvesting and preserving them for the utmost length of time. And the harvest right freeze dryer is gonna come in hand on that. And that is something that I'm like, yes, we need to do. Um, so this year we're focusing on a lot of our, our sedative, a lot of our Nervine herbs. Um, not to say that I'm not gonna grow this next year. We will absolutely grow more of this next year, uh, but they, I might not grow as much next year because as soon as I freeze dry these herbs, they're gonna last for like 25 years, which to me, blows my mind okay because if you go and you source herbs ethically source herbs which is fine and they're already dried the shelf life is only a couple of years so for me i'm just trying to maximize the amount of time and energy that i'm putting into these plants and the taste is almost as i mean honestly it tastes just like it was fresh uh, as soon as it reconstitutes so we will do more of that soon and my next video we're going to be harvesting a lot of our mint to go ahead and to freeze dry so i will i will show you that but back to what we have growing because we're gonna go down all types of rabbit holes if i don't just show you and stop talking we got baby chamomile starting to starting to grow so we're gonna harvest the flowers as soon as they're ready these are these are still growing um, but I have like, I think eight rows of chamomile growing and is, it is really one of my favorite, one of my favorite herbs that we, we enjoy in tea form, um, as well as making, uh, making glycerites with it. And then, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk more about that, but I wanted to show you our chamomile is growing. It's starting and it's going to be lovely. And if you didn't know, I am in grow zone 6B here in Virginia. Um, so it's hard sometimes seeing everybody else's gardens being so big and, and lush and mine's like me. <laughs> but it's a work in progress. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I also have a few bit of hyssop that is growing. I do need to come here and pull some of the weeds that we have growing. What I found though, is that if you pull the weeds uh, a little too quickly before your, your main plant starts to really grow is you might accidentally pull up the plant that you don't want. So that's kind of why it looks the way it is. And I promise it's not that I'm being lazy and that I'm not pulling the weeds because I most definitely am. Um, but I do need to come in through here and either pull the weeds or just snip the, snip the weeds and leave the roots in the ground and, uh, and do that because I have accidentally pulled up plants that I'm like, no, <laughs> I didn't want to pull you. I also am growing a good bit of calendula and I noticed yesterday while I was coming up here that we have one calendula baby that is getting ready to here it is can you see it <laughs> one calendula baby that's getting ready to open up so yeah we will be enjoying some calendula the motherwort is also growing now I've got motherwort growing outside of our apothecary as well as some here in in our garden I do plan on saving a lot of seeds this year um, and it is one that I, I think is it's very beautiful um, but motherwort in short is good for your your cardiovascular system and everybody could use a little bit of mother um, but yeah I can't wait I can't wait to see this growing and harvest one of my other favorite medicinal herbs that we add into our teas is holy basil. It's Tulsi. It's a form of basil. And I, I, I want you guys to read about holy basil. I want you to read about Tulsi. I, I think um, you're going to find that it's, it's an adaptogen herb and it is delicious. It smells good. It produces gorgeous flowers. RBs absolutely love it. Um, but 
not only beneficial for your, your pollinators, um, but it is so good for your body. And just keeping your adrenals nourished and, and keeping your body at balance, um, it smells good. Every time I smell it, I'm like, <sighs> so if I can put holy basil in all of our teas, I will. Um, so I have a good bit growing this year. They're still babies, but they are growing. So soon enough, we will have them grow. And I think I planted like 30. <laughs> I might have gotten excited. <laughs> and it's actually very possible that I might have grown more than 30. Um, and some we might just have volunteer for, for next. Now, I was going through my seeds and I was looking at all my baby plants that we have growing and I don't know if I messed up or if I completely forgot, um, but lemon balm, I gotta double check and see if I even started lemon balm. I think it might be fine. I think I'm just gonna do some seeds, drop them in the ground and see what happens so I'm not too, too worried um, if, I, if I forgot. Um, but lemon balm is another really good medicinal plant that I do love. Now, here's something that I'm experimenting with. This is ground ivy. And I will say that some people would pull the ground ivy out. However, I found that actually using ground ivy as a ground cover with your, for your plants, um, it actually helps really keep the moisture in. So this is our first bed that we're trialing with the ground ivy. And I have a few, few other plants that are gonna pop up here very soon. Some echinacea that is growing. It's in it, it's a mix, but I'm using these plants to help, to really help keep that moisture in because the raised beds, they can get quite dry. Uh, and I think it's beautiful. And ground ivy is actually medicinal as well. And I think I have a video out there, so I'll put that down below. This is my native honeysuckle. I did some reading and I found out that it actually is medicinal as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna see. This one's gonna be new for me, but got a couple of couple of them that we'll be opening up soon. Um, but I absolutely love the way it looks. The bees do love it. And I think it's just, it's wild, but I love it. Look how beautiful <laughs> this is turning out to be and massive. This is one of the stinkiest roots <laughs> that I have in our apothecary. However, the flower is Oh my goodness, it has such a beautiful smell. Now, valerian root is one of our favorite knockout roots <laughs> that you can have, um, but we recently tinctured it. And I will tell you, I really love the taste of valerian um, as a tincture form. There's a lot of good properties in it. I think we need to go over and I need to actually do that because my mom tinctured it and grabbed it for herself, but I think I need to make one for me, um, but it is, very, one of the things that I was reading about valerian fruit is when you tincture the root, um, it's used for pain management too, um, specifically for back pain. So <laughs> we're going to sample it. We're going to do it ourselves. I love the taste of it, um, but I just think that it's amazing and interesting and yeah. So I'll make sure to take you guys with me when we go to set that tincture up, um, but love the flower love it it's gorgeous and then i have a few more valerian babies growing uh, down below i did not want to harvest the root because i wanted to actually experience the flower because i was reading how stunning the flower actually smells which is again <laughs> crazy because the root is whoo stinky <laughs> um but it's it's beautiful now this lovely little plant that i have growing right here it's slowly but surely starting to grow up but this is shizandra berry another quite amazing adaptogen herb so we have two of them i've got some growing on this side and then i have uh, a few more growing on the other side of the archway soon enough this will pop and be gorgeous i can't wait 
I also still have a few more things that I have to finish planting um, right here in particular. I really need to, I need to get this into the ground. Uh, but this is um, St. John's Wort. So we will be, I need to do that probably like yesterday. The fever few is starting to we're starting to get there. Now, feverfew, I want you, a lot of people are like, oh, it's chamomile. No, it's actually feverfew. The leaves will be able to kind of give you that, uh, give it away. But feverfew is the vasodilator. This is what I use for migraine prevention. Um, if I have a migraine, this won't exactly touch it, but I will take it when I know that I will, um, that we're gonna be experiencing something that could potentially cause a migraine. Barometer dropping for me is kind of what triggers mine. Um, but we have this beautiful plant right here. This is a second year, second year fever few. And then it also dropped a lot of little babies. So all of these are going to be baby fever fuse. So I'm probably gonna pull some, um, gift some, and then also uh, we're just gonna see. We're gonna give it a shot. Let them, let them grow. And another favorite for your garden is echinacea. Echinacea you can use. It's great for your immune system. It's one of those herbs, two weeks, and then call it, hit it hard, hit it fast. Um, but we have a few that are starting to starting to bloom. Um, but echinacea is one that we'll use medicinally for helping with our immune system. Um, and also not only that, but there's some pretty cool stuff about echinacea. If you accidentally get bit by a snake, you might wanna keep echinacea near you um, because you can use it to help put on your snake bite that'll pull out that venom. So another reason why we have it growing in our garden. I also have more weeds growing in the garden. This right here is called wood sorrel. Um, these little pods, if you ever get an opportunity to uh, have them, harvest them, I'm telling you what, they are quite yummy actually. They have this like super sour little kind of taste to them. So, <laughs> What I like about it though, is it's very cooling. So when I come up here and I'm working in the garden and if I want something that might cool me down, that sour taste for some reason, I eat it. It's a little tangy, but, ooh, these gnats are bad. But anyways, definitely one that I like to have in the garden. The other thing that I like about wood sorrel, just like the ground ivy that we have growing in our beds, it will blanket your your raised bed area um, which will help which will help keep that moisture back in back into your garden so i'm playing around with two playing around with the ground ivy i think it's beautiful as well as as the wood sorrel um, plus there's food <laughs> if i'm up here working in the garden soon enough this Ray's bed is going to blow up, um, but this is actually uh, the passion flower that I was talking about, Passiflora incarnata. And look, I have so many little babies that are already starting to pop up. I'm going to have to pull some of some of those, um, which those are gifts. That's what we do. As soon as they pop up and they're not necessarily in a place that I want, I will grab them and we will gift them to people um, so if you're coming to my my workshop here in the next month you guys will more than likely leave with passion flower babies but all of these passion flower babies are going to grow up and over this archway and it is going to turn into my passion flower my passion flower fortress now i was really excited to see but all of our yarrow is getting ready to to open up and be wonderful. Yarrow is one of our medicinal herbs. It is a warrior herb. We will use it in teas. We will use it in tinctures. As soon as we get some Queen Anne's lace, I'm going to make sure that you guys can identify the difference between because a lot of people get Queen Anne's lace mixed up with yarrow. But soon enough, 
These are all gonna open and be stunning. And then of course we have my roses um, that we have growing. I also have some other stuff right here that most people would be like, why would you let grow in your garden? But this is narrow leaf plantain. And I think it's quite funny because here's how, here's how I think God kind of works sometimes. This plant that I have growing next to my roses is called narrow leaf plantain. And in short, we use it like a band-aid. So whenever I cut myself here in the garden, I will grab it and I will wrap, wrap it around my, my cut. Typically it's on my hands. And of course it's always when I am near the roses um, because of the little thorns. So I just think that it's not really ironic that I have narrow leaf plantain growing right next to my roses. And so we let it grow and we use it. And that's, that is how we use narrow leaf plantain. When I spoke about adding, having weeds in the garden, having my garden be alive, the other day I came out here and let's see if she's in there. I don't know, Oop, she is. Okay, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt you. My mint that I have growing, I was cleaning up a little bit and I noticed something moving and I, I had to stop because, look right here, can you see that? Oh no. Let's see if I can zoom in, here we go. Right there, <laughs> I have a, a little bird that decided to make her nest. That little mama decided to make her nest right here in my garden. So we're gonna let her, we're gonna let her be safe and keep her baby safe. But I wanted to come up and peek on my girls. I've got a lot more that I wanna share with you guys um, in this garden, but I wanna share, I wanna share this site with you. We're gonna be doing a nice little honey harvest this year. But all of, all of the girls are flying. And as you can see, we really need to expand our apiary and we've got some ideas and we're going to take you guys with us when that, when that is time. And yes, I do have mullen that is growing in my garden. I did not plant this wonderful plant here, um, but she wanted to be here. So that is what we're doing. So mullen is a medicinal plant. We use it for our respiratory system. You can use it in tea. You can use it uh, as a tincture. You can smoke mullen, um, but second year, it's going to grow big and tall. I'm not necessarily gonna use these leaves. I really only like the first year mullen, which I do have one growing beside it um, that I'll show you. But this is gonna grow a gorgeous stalk with beautiful yellow flowers, and we're gonna harvest the flowers and put them in oil and use them for your ear, um, for ear infections. So right now it's happy growing alongside my mint that we will be harvesting and freeze drying next. I'm probably gonna be doing that later today and you guys might catch that in another video. But this is the first year mullen, I'll show you. Now I did transplant it to see if one, to see if I could do it and so far, I think it's gonna make it. Um, some of the stuff on the outside, not so much, but right here in the middle, this poor little baby was gonna get run over and I was like, no, let's save them all in. Um, so this year I'm gonna let it grow a little bit more and we're gonna harvest the leaves and dry them and then use them, use them in our teas, use them in all the things, why not? It's free and it grows, but but I mainly want to share with you guys that you can bring the weeds into your garden. You can incorporate them into your garden. Not only are they offering uh, ground cover, but they're also offering medicinal properties. They're good for your bees, good for you. And I think we're going to have to do a second series of this video um, because I have a lot more things growing and I'm probably pretty sure that this video is going to be quite long. Um, but there's one thing I want to add kind of similar to that whole plantain, you know, about God's sense of humor and growing something right beside my beautiful rose plants that I'm constantly cutting myself on. Um, one of the other plants that we wanted to bring into our garden that I spoke of last year 
there was a lot of people that were having a very hard time um, with pain. And one of the one of the wild wild forage plants that you go and you forage for is uh, wild lettuce. Now you can take the wild lettuce, you can tincture it, blend it all up and tincture it, and and use it medicinally as an analgesic herb. But I planted all of this last year and it is starting to go to seed and that is okay um, that's our goal we're going to harvest the seeds save them and of course use them to grow more but then what happened <laughs> that i did not plant again this is another species of wild lettuce um, i did not grow this okay i did not plant this here this volunteered itself and I already harvested a good bit during our one of our last workshops so that people can come and get that hands-on experience and make the tinctures. But here's, here's what I think is funny. I spoke about wanting more wild lettuce. I spoke about how a lot of people that I know, they, they were having a hard time finding it or they needed it. And I'm going to bring God into this one because he must have heard me and he must know that there is a reason why. But out of the many years that we have been growing here in our garden, not necessarily growing this wild lettuce species, um, but this happened and I just, I'm just going to show you. I have wild lettuce growing all in our apiary so when you say hey <laughs> it'd be nice to find more wild lettuce to be able to bless people with um well god says okay here you go and yeah that's that is what that is what is happening um, now i know that there are going to be other people who have their own forms of belief with that and that is okay this is something that i i have experienced and witnessed multiple times here on our homestead i want to be very open and honest about my thoughts um, with herbal medicine and the use of what we have been blessed with and uh yeah it's i think it's beautiful it's something beautiful and it's something that here that is provided here that we can use to help with our body to help support us and i believe that god put them all here and you're allowed to believe what you want to believe so i we're going to do this again because i have a lot more plants that i want to share with you guys that are growing and not enough time not enough time in the day to film. So, as always, thank you guys for coming on my garden. <sighs> that very loud rooster. Thank you guys for coming with me in my garden and seeing what we have growing. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.